Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Phil Jones from the Sound United Training Team, and we are here to talk about virtual home consultation. So who am I? I am the director of training for um, Sound United's uh, lineup of brands, including Denim Morant, Classe, Boston Acoustics, Defenders Technology, and Polk. So we are actually, let me turn this off, um, at my lovely home. You can actually hear my cat probably meowing in the distance in the background. While you are social distancing, I am social distancing. So I am at home in my media room with my my pride and joy, my big my big A V rack, and we're here to talk about virtual um home consultation. Um so let's begin. So first let's talk about why virtual home consultation. Um even though this is a very challenging time because of um basically social distancing or any other time where you have to be at home um, for long periods of time, whether it's a blizzard or a snowstorm where you cannot get out, um, customers are still looking to purchase AV products for their home um, for a couple of reasons. The first thing is um, it, it's a way to uh, make their home more relaxing, to get away from it all, to escape with their, ki with their, with their, um, with their family. And we know that nothing calms the soul better than music, and nothing gives you a bigger, um, a greater escape from what's going around, what's, what's happening around you, than a movie. You're watching a movie for the two hours you're watching Zombieland 2, which, by the way, is very good. Um, you're not thinking about the rest of the time. If you're watching Ford versus Ferrari for those two days, for that, for that two hours, you have escaped the rest of the world, and you're in, you're in that space. So customers are still looking for, for those experiences. And normally, to give the customer the best experience, we normally go do a home visit. And unfortunately, be, um, because of where we're at now, that can be a little bit more, more difficult. But it does not mean that you cannot still be there. You're actually in my house with my equipment, and you'll probably hear my loud cat, um, and we can... And basically, you, we're doing this session. We're going to basically visit my home. Um, we'll talk about why you want to do a, a virtual home consultation. And then we'll give you some tips and tricks. These are not the only tips that you can come up with. Just some ideas that popped in my head about things you can do to, um, to enhance a virtual home consultation. If you have um, any um, other ideas that I may have forgotten, please put them in the question window below. If you look in your section, you'll see a little air space that says question. Please put your questions there, and we will try our best to answer those questions, um, hopefully during the presentation or after. Or if you have any great input or any tools and tricks that you're using um, uh, in your businesses to actually help walk a customer through a, uh, to review a house or do a visit virtually, please let me know. It is a fact that many of the brick and mortar stores are going to uh, have went to a pickup only model. Basically, you order it online, you go pick it up. But there's still customers out there that still, especially when they're spending um, a lot, when they have a large investment or a large amount of money they want to spend, um, including myself, I want to talk to a live person um, to make sure that he understands or she understands exactly what I need. Um, to make sure that the product recommendation they give me is personalized for me. So there's still customers out there that want to talk to you in person and, 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 have, and, and explain their situation and have you help them figure out what is the best solution. Okay. Now, I know you may say, well, do I really need to, in my business, do virtual home consultations? Because a lot of you may still be busy. It's true, you can be busy right now. So why should you consider a virtual um, consultation? Well, the first thing is um, you're busy right now based on um, jobs that were, and that were probably quartered or spec a couple of months ago. So while you're still doing those retrofits, new construction, those office projects, those, um, those educational school projects, um, those projects will continue on because those are planned ahead of time. Um, but the goal is to give you a tool to help you prepare for later, okay? Um, 
So certainly use every tool possible to come up with quotes for new jobs now so you're prepared to have jobs in the late summer and the fall. So that's what we're talking about here. Let's, um, a way to help build your business so later um, you can actually have jobs already down the pipeline. The next thing, um, I know that in many areas, um, custom in install and custom installation is considered an essential service because a lot of us are actually, uh, um, we need our internet like to do things like I'm doing here um, for, for these, types of, uh, these types of presentations. So I can see it being an essential service because people need to outfit their office with better Wi-Fi, better networking capabilities. They need, they need uh, monitors. They need all of that stuff. So I can see it being virtual, um, a essential service. But that can vary from state to state to state. And some customers and some dealers are more cautious than others. I know this experience personally because I am looking for a new home, a new screen, projection screen, to go into my office. And I called a couple of my buddies who own, who own um, installation uh, shops um, in San Diego County, and both of them, are, or neither of them, are actually doing, uh, going in the customer's houses to complete jobs. But it did not mean that I could not basically log on, walk him through my space, show him where I want the projector, you know, um, we could see where the studs are using a stud finder. He can see where the power, where he has to run the power and all that stuff. And he can have a, and, and he can give me a better estimate of what the job will cost once um, he starts to do jobs. So just because um, some people are more cautious, whether it's the customer or whether it's, uh, um, or whether it's the dealer, you may not want to go. So we're talking about ways you can still generate new business. So some test clients may be hesitant to have strangers in their homes. You know, um, right now, sometimes you don't want that person in your house because it's supposed to be social distancing and you want to stay with the, the people in your household just for safety reasons. Or um, even if you're even past this, you may have people who just don't like a lot of strangers running around their home as often. So it's kind of nice to be able to give them an estimate, walk them through, build a little rapport um, remotely um, do a, doing a virtual visit. And, of course, if you find any client, customer um, um, that is uncomfortable with the visit, virtual is just another tool in your toolbox. So why would a client, a customer, um, want virtu a virtual consultation? Well, the main thing is to keep their summer and fall projects on schedule. So um, if you want to say, when we come out of this thing, you're going to want to have barbecues and, outside, and, and outdoor activities. You're going to want to enjoy being outside with your, with your friends and family. So you may want to finish that, um, multi, that music, outdoor music system that you had last that you, that you had planned on. Or remodel your kitchen so you're ready for Thanksgiving. All of those things have to be budgeted and planned now so I can ensure that the project is, um, gets it done by the time I want to use it. So um, you, clients need to budget for remodeling projects that are happening a few months from now. So they need to talk to you right now. The longer a consumer waits for the consultation, the longer they're going to have to wait before the project is started or completed. So if I want to have that beautiful outdoor 4th of July barbecue with a new, my new sound system outside, I need to plan for that and get it installed. So if I want it done by the start, I need to plan for it right now. And for you, as a, um, a dealer or a store, you can offer, um, you, you can give your best customers the ability to get to the front of the line. You can tell them, look, I want to make sure that when we, when, um, we can get into your house, or when we start going back into homes, or you let me go into your home, you, I can put you at the front of the line ensure that your project gets done first if we plan for it now. So it allows you to get your clients to the front of the line. The next thing, building trust. We know that um, uh, visiting a customer's home has always helped build trust. 
when I was a salesperson, we used to always try to get to a customer's home because I can I can see how they live their lives. I um they they start to trust me more, but I really see their lifestyle and what they're looking for. So when I make a recommendation, they're more likely to take that recommendation because we have a level of trust that has been established, and they're more likely to purchase what I suggested. We always say just looking means I'm looking for something to buy. So once I am sure that I know what I need to buy, I'm more likely to buy it. I am no longer just looking. And there's a lot of tools out there that you can use to take advantage to do a virtual home consultation. Utilize all of these great technologies. So for example, I am actually using, uh, and I'll let you know what the system is. This is a basic webcam. I am talking, I am using my cell phone, called into the call. So I have a wireless earbud so I can walk around the house. Um, I also have an iPad that I'm going to utilize later so I can walk around the house and show you um, and give someone, give you a tour of my house so you can help determine what I need to fit in my house to give them all kinds of music, whatever that is. And there's tons of apps available right now. If you think about it, everybody has used FaceTime or Zoom or WhatsApp. The list goes on and on for video chat. So whether it's talking to your grandparents, talking to the kids, um, work. We are, how many remote meetings have you been on? Web webinars have you been on lately? We're on one right now. So people are used to these tools, and they are readily available and can be readily utilized to give you a face-to-face -face -face communication which is far more powerful than just a phone call if you're trying to actually convince somebody to, um, to deal with you and, uh, and, and prove to them that you are the best person to provide them with the solution. So utilize all of these great tools that are available. Some of them are free, some of them are, are, are not, but a lot of them are available for free. FaceTime, Zoom, WhatsApp, those things are available for free, and you can definitely take advantage of them. There's plenty of them around. So why not use these social media platforms to visit your customers' homes virtually? So we know that home visits are normally done to, to determine room layouts and customer lifestyle. Um, I want it, I've, I've learned a long time ago that if I try to walk a customer through a problem, um, and I would spend an hour on the phone trying to help a customer figure out a solution. And then I, I would get frustrated and say, where do you live? And he would live five minutes from the store. And I would just drive over there and say, oh, you got this one button that is in the wrong position. And I'd hit that one button and the system comes up. So a lot of times um, it's, it's more effective if I can see you and I can talk to you um, and, and, and see what's going on in your situation. So being able to see the room layout, if it's vaulted ceiling, or how big the room is, um, find out where they want to play music, um, how big, a, how far away are they sitting from the TV, how much light is coming into the room, um, how, where is their Wi-Fi router. All these things can be achieved by using the social media, using social media apps these days. Um, now, is it going to be as effective as being in the customer's actual home? No. But is it far more effective than them just trying to verbally explain what's going on in their life? Yes, it is. So there's several things that you could ask. Um, for example, um, that you should ask to see. Think about the stuff that you would ask to see if you were in the house for real. The first thing is, show me the room you want to put music in. Um, and so you walk around and you ask them to show you the room. Does the room have exposed beams, vaulted ceilings? If I'm going to run the wires through the wall, is it an, out, is it an, um, a, um, an outward wall that has fire blocks in it? Um, all those things you can actually tell now. How big is the screen? How far away are they sitting? How much light is being um, um, uh, on it? How much, if I'm doing a projecting screen, how much ambient light is in the room? Um, do I need more blackout curtains or a brighter projector for that particular experience? All those things you can ask to see by just tell them to turn off the lights and close the curtains and see how much light is coming into the room. And, and, the, and there's also a variety of other apps we'll talk about that you can use to get measurements to make your, um, to have a better understanding of the environment that the customer lives in so you can make better um, recommendations. Ask about existing products and how they're installed. 
if a person said they haven't had a lot of like electronic equipment, the first thing you're going to ask is, like, what does it look like? Where is it located? How is it connected? And you can see all of that stuff using a webcam. Also, if I'm thinking about replacing my TV. Uh, let me see the Walmart. How big is the TV you have right now? Let me see the Walmart. And that just gives you the ability to say, hey, looking at that TV and the wall mount you have, and you want to go from 55 to an 85, we're, probably, we're going to have to add a wall mount to that, um, to, your, to your list of things you need um, to make sure that your, prop, your TV is properly supported. All that can be done without you having to be there by using the social media virtual home consultation. Wi-Fi. Um, we know Wi-Fi is important. We know Internet is important, especially in times like this. This whole um, web conference we're doing would not work if my Wi-Fi network is not very strong. I, my wife is downstairs doing a WebEx for her job. My daughter is uh, doing virtual schoolwork. My son is playing Minecraft right now. We need, so Wi-Fi is important. So where is the router? What's your, um, where are your access points? Um, where do you want to put the speakers? How far away is the router from the wireless speakers? All those things can be determined virtually using just the webcam. So ask to see those things. Think about the things you would ask to see if you were there. The next thing, lifestyle questions. Ask them questions about how they live their lives. Ask them to see the space. Show me the rooms. Which rooms do you listen to music actively? Actively to me is I sit down and I play music um, and I focus on it. Um, passive listening is if I'm using music while I'm cooking or barbecuing or just as a background as I shoot pool. Two different experiences. Active listening requires better or deserves better equipment. So you may look at it and say, hey, we can do um, these beautiful wireless speakers throughout the house, so while you're cooking or entertaining, you get a great, um, uh, you get a good passive listening experience that, that everybody can enjoy. But then, in the room that you're serious about watching a movie or looking at or playing some music, we have better solutions for that because those rooms deserve those, that better solution. But all those conversations can be had um, based on um, just talking to them about their lifestyle. How many people are going to be using the Internet? Um, uh, does your kid, does, what is your kid? Let's go look at your kid's room. He wants to play Minecraft? Let's look at the TV. Does he have a TV in there? Is he just playing on his tablet? Would he like to play Minecraft on a TV? Let's go look at that. And, and based on their lifestyle, you can do a, you can have a, a better recommendation. Um, so ask questions about their lifestyle. The next thing. Um, it is important, of course, in any sale to build trust and establish rapport. Make them comfortable talking to you. And um, we also want to maximize the impact of these virtual visits. So you want to stress to them that the recommend recommendations you're making are personalized to fit, to fit their specific needs. So I suggest using, rec uh, I call them uh, recommendation reinforcing statements. So what does that mean? Um, make it personalized. I noticed that you um, sit 14 feet away from the TV. Maybe you should have a bigger set. You mentioned that your wife likes to play a lot of music in her office. So maybe we should, instead of putting a small wireless speaker in there, we should do a small Marantz in our um, receiver and a pair of bookshelf speakers to give that person a better, to give your wife a better music experience. Based on what I see, it appears that your Wi-Fi router is too far away um, from your wireless speakers. Or um, I know, uh, based on what I see, you, know, you said you have high-speed internet, but I, but the speed test only shows 10 megabits per second. So based on what I see here, maybe we should update your router and your access point so you get all of the bandwidth you're paying for. Based on what you told me. Um, I would suggest that you need four speakers or speakers, in, uh, a small speaker in your living room, the bedroom, and uh, the living room, the, the, the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen instead of one big speaker so you don't blow out your, have to blow away everybody in the living room so you can hear it in the kitchen. So use these reinforcing statements to, um, based on what you told me, you're a movie buff, and maybe you should get a bigger TV or maybe you should think about adding some audio 
with that television. Or maybe you should step up from a sound bar to a component system because based on what you told me, you are really into movies and I want to make sure you get the best experience. So utilize these recommend, recommendation reinforcing statements. The next thing, use the opportunity to, um, to maximize the customer's experience. Show the client additional things that may improve their lifestyle. We know that we're social distancing right now. Or, um, so, these, so, so there's a lot of devices that can make that more, um, provide a level of safety and a level of convenience for day to day for the rest forever. So for example, um, uh, smart door locks. If someone, uh, a plumber's coming to your house and you may want to get, you still want to get your toilet fixed, but you may not want to have to open the door and deal with the plumber and, and, and you, you want to stay your six feet away, you can unlock the door, let the, let the plumber go into the house, go fix the toilet with the webcam, you leave a check on the counter, he grabs the check and he leaves. Ta-da! Um, without, uh, and you can do it and you can lock the door. Someone leaves the door, video doorbell. So when, the, when your posted um, Chinese food shows up, you know that it's outside and you can pick it up. Um, someone rings the doorbell and says, I have a big package for you. You can say, great. You can open the garage remotely and say, put it in the garage. And then once they put the package in the garage, you can close it. Lots of activity, lots of different things you can do to enhance, um, uh, utilize to improve lifestyle, safety, convenience, and just make life a lot better. Um, we know also things like uh, there's been surveys showing that wireless speakers, as well as um, uh, wireless speakers and voice control, has had a big bump um, since uh, um, this situation has started. So there's opportunities out there. We've heard that um, a lot of small AV systems, people are looking to enhance their AV. Um, if they have the opportunity, those that chance is still there. There's other ways you can do things you can point out that they may not have even think, thought about. For example, um, I have a 4K, I have a couple of 4K TVs throughout my house. Most laptops can output 4K. Corporate laptop, I, um, um, MacBooks, Mac, any, most laptops, no problem. And guess what? A lot of times when you're working from home and you want to be productive, um, you may have, now you work from home, you just have your laptop. They have a 4K TV, they have the world's best Computer monitor. You take the one HDMI out of the laptop, you plug it into the into your TV, you tell the the, uh, the laptop that it's 4K, and now I can utilize my 4K TV as my computer monitor. I have been doing this um, in my house for, for many years, and the, the amount, how much it's helped me when it comes to being productive is absolutely amazing. I have a little 48-inch um, Sony um, 4K TV, on my desktop as my computer monitor, and it is the equivalent of four 24-inch computer monitors. So I can snap multiple things to multiple corners, um, and I can actually utilize it to copy and paste from one document to another, or, or have multiple things happening at the same time. A lot of customers have 4K TVs, and most customers who are gonna buy a TV are gonna buy it for 4K. This is another um, uh, way that you can actually utilize that existing thing. Plug your laptop into the AVR. AVR sends a signal to your TV. You sit on the couch and use your big 65 or 70 inch TV as, or 85 inch TV as your, as your big computer monitor. Makes for a lot better um, and a lot more productive work environment. But those types of things you can point out when you're in the house. Why? Wow, you got a 4K TV in the office. You ever thought about using it as a, as a secondary computer monitor? I didn't think I could do that. Oh, yes, you can. So there's lots of options there. The next thing, smart remote management. Smart remote management is great because it allows you to go in and um, to check the status and monitor all of the clients and consumers can AV equipment remotely. So if a person has a problem and once it's set up, you can tell them, hey, I, I can fix it immediately without having to go to your home. Or if, um, like, for example, in my house, sometimes my wife may call me and say, hey, I'm trying to watch um, TV, and the stereo equipment clicked on, but the TV is still blank. And I can say, oh, yeah, I forgot I was watching a movie last night. Maybe the receiver did not switch from HDMI um, number monitor 2 to HDMI monitor 1. And I can log into my, um, into my Domo's account, 
go to my Marantz receiver and switch to the proper input or rename an input or turn the receiver on or turn the receiver off. I can check internet speed. I can do all of that stuff remotely. So not only can you provide uh, a virtual consultation, you can also provide um, remote, um, high, uh, the ability to do remote services. If I was actually there, I can help you troubleshoot your problem. So smart remote management is another opportunity that you could bring up um, when, you, when you're talking about um, virtual, doing your virtual home consultation. We're going to actually do a large session on um, smart remote management uh, over the next, uh, next week, I believe. So please stand by. We're going to talk about the difference between domotes and oversee and IEG and, what, and I'll show you what the different interfaces look like and how they interface with products like our Denon and Marantz. Right. The next thing, try to maximize your time together. Ask the consumer um, to do a little pre-work um, uh, in their house before you get there. So what does that mean? Well, I could come and I can wait till I get to the customer's house and use all the measurements and tape and, and measure everything and look at all the equipment, or I can just ask the customer to write that stuff down. So I can do a little pre-work before I get there. So I know what receiver they have, what TV they have, um, how big is the TV they, they have, um, how big is the room, um, and what type of mount they're using. And for example, um, normally if I go to a customer's house, I want to climb up in the attic um, or at least look in the attic or the basement to see how do I run wire from, um, can I run wire from one side of the house to the other, either through the attic, the basement, or the crawl spaces. So, um, I could do that when I get there, or the customer could take a photograph of the attic or the basement of the crawl space to get you started uh, instead of having to walk all the way down there. You may, he may take a photograph of the basement, you may have more questions, so he still may have to go down there and look at the walls and the ceilings, but at least you can get started and you can get, you can be more productive with your time. Uh, make sure the customer has the right tools um, at hand. So things like a, I mean, a tape measure, you gotta have a tape measure, a flashlight to maybe look at that um, behind uh, that AV rack or um, uh, light up the mounts behind the TV so you can better see what it looks like on the web, on the web chat, as well as a stud finder. Um, can I run that power wire or that speaker wire from an end wall down to where he wants to put the receiver? So those types of things could be something you can ask the, the customer to have handy prior to the installation. Oh, one more thing before we talk about that, there's certain apps that the customer should also maybe download. They're free, which will help you get a better understanding of what's going on in their, in their home. So for example, a speed test. If a customer's paying for high-speed internet and I look at this speed test and see they only, they only get nine megabits per second, that tells me it is time for a new router and a, uh, and maybe a, a maybe access point. You need, they need something to improve their, um, their uh, internet experience. I can bring up a Wi-Fi sniffer to see um, how strong the signal is and what signals are available. So for example, our heel enabled products within the brand can be placed on the five um, gigahertz or, this five, or the 2.4 gigahertz uh, bandwidth. So I may see that there's not a lot of products on five and put it up there. Or, if I leave it on 2.4, what channel in 2.4 is the best channel to put the equipment in so it's not, it's not fighting with my neighbor's um, uh, wireless music system for bandwidth? So these types of are, are, are apps that you can use. And there's a variety of other apps, ambient light apps. So if you're doing a projector, there's plenty of apps that will tell you how much light is in the room. So when they turn down the light and hold up that uh, in the daytime, you can see it, how dark does that room actually get and, the, and you can help you help to help explain why you may need an ambient rejecting screen in that room or maybe motorized curtains to darken the room for the projector they want to use um, if they want to use their projector during the day. So these are certain apps that that person can download. Now, you can ask the customer to get all these tools and get all of these apps, or you can offer the ultimate in service and come up with, like me, think of it like a pre inspection kit with your tape measure and your flashlight and um, and your stud finder in there as well as a, a cheap tablet, Android-based tablet. Now, you notice it is the Fisher-Price Kid Reinforced tablet. 
that's the one you want to use because it's less likely for them to drop it and break it. If they break it, it's like a hundred bucks. You can get these little Android um, enabled uh, or Fire TV or Fire tablets for right around a little bit less, right around a hundred bucks. So you can build a full pre-inspection kit for about two hundred dollars, and um, at, for less than two hundred dollars, with everything that they need. Now, there's a couple things you can do. You can just you can drop it off at the customer's house the day before. They can utilize it for the inspection, and then you can go back and pick it up. You can even say, hey, you know, you can, if you want to, it's up to you, you can say, hey, maybe we can do a little deposit, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks for a little kit, and then um, once I pick it back up, I'll just refund you the 50 bucks. Um, it allows you to, one, get a commitment, a monetary commitment, and two, call them, hey, what about the kit? Can I, you want me to pick up the kit now? What do you think about the, the recommend? Let's talk about what do you think about the recommendations that I made. They went on forward with that. So one of these little pre-inspection kits is a good um, idea. Go the extra mile. Even if they, it is a DIY project, collect and deliver all of the products that are required to get the job done. So what does that mean? Well, I say don't be the Home Depot guy. What does that mean? We've opened the Home Depot. Where to do a project, like I'm going to do a plumbing project where I'm putting a new sink in. And it seems like I have to go to Home Depot about six times. I bet you if I ask everybody out there how many times that they've been, um, been able to finish a DIY product project with just one trip to Home Depot, I guarantee you most of you will say that it never happened. I go to get the pipe, but, and I ask the guy, where's the pipe? He says, it's over here. And I get all the pipe and all the bins, and I go home, and I realize, don't have the glue. So I go back to the to Home Depot and I find the same guy and I say, where is the glue? And he says, over there. And then I go get the glue and I have the pipe and the glue and I realize, oh my God, I need a reducer. And then I walk back and I find the Home Depot girl and I say, where's the reducer? And she says, over there. And you go get that. And you end up making multiple stops. That is because that Home Depot person doesn't really know what your job is. If you took your webcam, and you showed Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Home Depot person what you were doing, and they could see under your sink, they would say, oh, you need, you need a straight pipe, a 90-degree a 90 reducer, a flexible reducer, a, a flexible pipe, a reducer, you need glue, you need this, you need that, you need a new drain. All those things they would tell you because they could see what you're actually trying to accomplish, and then you would just make one trip. Because you're doing a virtual consultation, you have been in their house. You know that they're going to need a longer cable. You know that they're going to need um, a, a, maybe a stand or a place to put the product or a new mount. So because you've had this experience and you've toured their home, you can make a recommendation for a complete solution that has everything that they need to get the job done. And that separates you from buying it on the Internet or like Amazon one piece at a time because that's a service that you can provide that, that you normally cannot get from just um, shopping online. Make sure you collect everything, deliver it all. Now, there will be some things that you don't want. We know that installation is profitable. So yeah, of course, mounting a screen or real wired home house, whole house audio, um, full control systems, that is something that you do. But, but if a person just wants to add a couple more wireless speakers right now, and then when things, when you get the opportunity to come to their house, add some more elaborate equipment, they can get that stuff going right now. And if you're going to help uh, have them do DIY, take a few minutes to do a video chat with them to make sure that they set the product up properly. Um, I can show somebody how to set up a new Heos enabled Den and Home speaker in three minutes in a video chat because if there's any problem, I can immediately see what that problem is and make a recommendation on how to fix it. So. Take a little bit of time, do a little video chat. It'll separate you from all the big box stores out there and all the other salespeople because you took a few minutes out of your time with your phone while you eat your McDonald's or your Burger King and help this person walk through their setup. The next thing is, we know, like I said, we know installation is profitable. Um, uh, but helping a customer set up their own product goes a long way towards building a long-term relationship. The more we communicate with our clients, and the more cons the consumer communicates with the salesperson, 
the, the stronger the bond becomes between the two people. And it also helps you get product into the customer's hands today. They want to enjoy the, um, this, these new, the better audio right now. So if I can ship them the speakers they need as well as a mesh network and help them figure out how to, how to get that running, that at least gets them started. And then I'll come in and put the big switch in the rack and all of the wired stuff in the backyard and the outdoor speakers. So, but at least you get the, get the product in the customer's hands because you take a little bit of time to walk somebody through the setup of like a den at home or um, they're going to buy a home theater, but they also want to get a sound bar for their back for their bedroom. Helping them set up that sound bar and that den at home speaker may actually um, result, probably will result in more future sales. Get them into the tech, show them how easy it is to utilize the tech, and they're more likely to come back asking for more things to enhance their audio video lifestyle. I want to give you a tour of my home. So, so let's see if we can do that real quick. Is I have an iPad here. And on this iPad, I have a service, a power mirror. And this works for either an Android or an iOS phone. So I can actually walk you through my house with this particular iPad. So basically, let me go in here and we start screen mirroring. So now we have the screen mirroring on and you can actually see my, my iPad. So say, for example, we were talking about smart remote management. I can actually, oh, I need to realize I got to click on it here. I can click on here and I can actually walk somebody through my, um, the house. So here is actually um, my home. So I can go in, I can see all the stuff that's going on in my house. I can do something like we were talking about, like so I can go in and look at, um, uh, I can jump into my den and receiver and I can connect it and I can go into my den and receiver and I can go in and, and turn it on, turn it off um, and do all the stuff that I need to do to actually see what's going on in my rack. So there is my house. So I can see that my receiver is on. I can see what settings I'm actually utilizing. I can make adjustments and everything else using my iPad. The other thing that you can do with this is right now I am using a webcam. So you and I are talking through a webcam that's plugged directly in front of me. What I can also do is I can take the iPad and I can make it a webcam. So now this is my iPad. So there is my equipment rack. So the nice thing about it is if you have equipment in your house, you can walk the client through the experience using your house as basically a demo showroom. So if you have a showroom, great. You can walk them through your house using the, um, use your house, oh, by the way, there's my uh, bar, I'm so happy about that. Um, and you can show them how the, all the equipment works in your particular system and how it works in your, in your house. So let's go around here. And there is my, my big TV. And actually we'll turn this to TV. So I can go in. And I can look at all of my equipment. I can look at the TV. I can see how the ceiling is located, where the outdoor, where the speakers are located. I can find out little things like where is the crawl space and can I access the crawl space? And I can see, can I get to the speaker um, using this particular crawl space? I can find out where the subs are located. All sorts of great things. So. Go around here. So walk back over here. Let me get my my trusty tools here. So the first thing I want to get is my 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 um my tablet. I mean my um my flashlight and my tape measure. So I can, of course I have my tape measure right here, so I can measure anything that I need to do. And of course you need a flashlight. So for example, if I walk over to this space over here, I can actually turn, if I need to see behind the TV, I can use the flashlight and have them move it a little closer or further to see where the mount is and what type of mount is being used. 
and how and all that type of situation. Do I have an HDMI input? Am I using HDMI balance? Am I using a full HDMI cord? All that stuff can be determined um, utilizing uh, a flashlight so I can see behind the stuff. So let me go down here into my into my living room. So let's make believe that we are actually doing looking at doing multi-zone music in my house. Oh, there's my son. He's probably going to run by. <laughs> so, so say I want to do multi-zone music in my house. So the first thing I would notice is that you, when you went into the house, you would see that I have vaulted ceilings with no way to run the wire from inside to outside or to other areas. If I look down, the, this is on the second floor, and below this is my bedroom. So there's no way to go into the basement or crawl space. So getting the wire from uh, maybe from the backyard, from my deck, all the way to my theater room may be challenging. So there's some options you could do. So as you're going through, you can say, well, you say you want to add music in your, your main, your, your kitchen. So why don't we do something like this? This is a new Denon um, Home 150. Why don't we put that inside the, in, inside the kitchen for music? And then you have in the living room, or the dining room actually, a great solution to have music there so you don't, you don't have to blast the kitchen to hear it in the dining room. Would be maybe something like a Denon 250. It's a little bigger than the 150, but it's big enough to fill this space. Now, I have some speakers, um, Polk Atriums, outside on my deck. And we already mentioned that in my house, I have vaulted ceilings. And I didn't want to run. My wife said, no more wires running along the beams. So what I did was maybe you could do something like this. That is a Denon, um, a, De um, a Heels amp, which is connecting Wi-Fi to the network to power my, my Polk HM speakers outside. So just by looking at the home, you could actually help determine what's the best approach for this particular room. This space is really big. Um, I didn't want it, there was no place to put in walls and my wife said, there's no way you're going to cut holes in that, 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 uh, that wall to put in walls in, even though I have the plates there, as you can see. So I put a Denon 350 just tucked over in the corner. So between the 150, the 250, the 350, I have multi-zone music in this space. And of course, that is the, this door here is to my garage, which is right below my theater. So of course, I can power that from the rack that was in my theater, as well as the speakers in the front of the house. So just by walking through the home and looking at what spaces you have and where you can place stuff and asking questions about, can I, put, can I cut a hole in this wall or can I, can I run a wire here, you can have me making a better recommendation on what's the best option for the particular client that you're dealing with. So you can see just by me giving you a quick tour of my space, it helps you better understand what you would need to, for that to happen or for me to utilize it. So if I have, for example, if I have my rack right here, I need to get the, the, uh, the video all the way over to this TV and um, as well as the projector in the back of the room for the projection screen. So you can figure out how much of the cable, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need cables or balance or active HDMI, it's gonna have to be longer, we need to do ER, we need to do mount because the TV is bigger. You can measure the distance between the TV and the couch to determine what's the best size for that particular environment. I can see that there's a big window here. So 
So, of course, I'm going to need blackout curtains if I want to use my projection TV, my projector during the day. All this stuff can easily be determined by just taking a quick tour of the home. So, um, actually, people are always asking me what is in this rack. Nice thing about being in the industry so long, you get the opportunity to uh, to get stuff. So that is a Denon AV 8805 along with a PM10 amplifier at the bottom with an 8077, um, a power conditioner. You can see the there's a Helios um, amp, there's a Helios multi-zone um, uh, Helios drive here, right here that drives um, my garage and my and my and in front of the house, there's a media PC, a PlayStation, um, all my stuff. And by the way, an Xbox, a Roku, all that stuff all fits in this rack. So, so, so everybody asked me about that. And that's, that's what that is. I know people are going to say, what's in that rack? And of course, um, everything. So people said, how, do I, how did I do this? How did I go through this? This is not very hard. What I'm using is a, a pretty good webcam. That was the one that you were seeing me being reflected on. My, my laptop, and my iPad. And that on-screen menu you see there is a, from, a, it's from a company called A-Power. And if you get that particular application, you can use your smartphone, whether it's an Android phone or an iOS device, as your camera like I am doing right this second. Make sure you move slow. I'm sure Jim's going to say, I got him too sick. I probably didn't move slow enough. And, um, I had noticed that it is a little better to utilize your um, smartphone instead of an iPad because it's easier to get in tight spaces. Now, uh, the reason why I didn't is I have the iPhone in my pocket and I have earbuds in so I can walk around my house uh, and talk to you with that iPad. So instead of using the computer's um, audio, I'm actually, I called in to the meeting um, and I connected my phone to the computer so I could walk around the room using my cell phone, using my earbuds, and, uh, and, uh, and talk to you and show the video. So you can see the video. So it's a pretty smooth experience. And we're talking about if you have a phone, um, uh, um, hopefully you have a phone. I hope so. If you have a tablet or someone in your family has a tablet or someone in the store has a tablet. And you have a webcam, either on your built into your computer or a secondary computer. You can provide a pretty good um, virtual demonstration as well as get a very good tour. The customer just walks around with their phone. All they need is their phone to show you their house. But if you want to do demos, you would need you would need a phone. You would need um, another uh, webcam and preferably another mobile device if you want to walk around. Um, and show a better experience. So, so hopefully you found that interesting. So, um, so let's see if we have any questions uh, here. Um, somebody asked me what Wi-Fi analyzer would you recommend for a customer. Uh, I'm not sure which one I was using. I'd have to I'd have to look it up in my in my phone on our YouTube channel. We will actually list the products that I'm using. What webcam am I am I using? What apps am I using? All that stuff will be added to the, the end of the video. Of course, for the webinar, we're using GoToWebinar. For my iPad, A PowerSoft is the application that I am using on my iPad in order to use it as a secondary camera. And oh, by the way, um, this only applies if I'm using a iPad on a Windows computer, which is what I'm doing now. If you have an iPad, you can, um, you can send it to a, a Mac computer using just AirPlay, so you wouldn't have to download this application. Um, make sure if you're not subscribed to Sound United University, you're subscribed to Sound United University as well. So we have a new um, training YouTube channel. Please make sure you subscribe. We're going to try to put more um, things on there, like how to set up a dinner and home speaker, um, Odyssey setup, tips and tricks, as well as we're starting a new um, training Instagram page, which is going to cover quick little things. Like I just got a 20 meter um, 8K ultra high speed cable. That's so 20 meters, um, 48 gigabit cable. So those types of things I'd want to let you guys know about. So you are, um, so you understand 
and you learn about these cool new technologies um, as um, time goes on. I would like to thank you for your time, and I hope you got something productive um, from the presentation today. And um, hopefully I will see you next Wednesday for the next topic. So take care, and I will talk to you soon.